had a little problem then, didn't I? <laughs> I got to tell you, I'm really excited to be here because it's been one of my ambitions to be in a humorous contest at district level. <laughs> hey, you made it. <laughs> All I had to do was show up. <laughs> wow. I don't know about all this talk. Welcome to the humorous contest about which is the most important, which is the most difficult, which is the most meaningful. The thing about the contestants today is they have to do everything that everybody else has done and they have to make you laugh as well. So I think it's a really tough gig. So I hope that we're going to give them lots of love, right? Excellent. Now, I have a little script here, and it's very, it's very dark over here, dark little corner. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the humorous speech contest. The subject of each humorous speech has been selected by the contestant. Contestants must prepare their own speeches, certified in writing to the chief judge. Any quoted material must be identified during the speech presentation. It is a speech with humour rather than a series of one-liners. The procedure for the humorous speech contest is for the contestants to present their speech in a time of five to seven minutes. All contestants will speak from the same speaking area. I think you know that during the presentations, you're not allowed to move around the room, you're not allowed to leave the room, you're not allowed to come back in the room, whatever you're not allowed to do, you're not allowed to take photos, and of course nobody's got their mobile phone turned on, have they? They wouldn't dream of it, right? And I think you all know by now that as each contestant finishes their speech, you have to be quiet for one minute while the judges do their adding up. Now we've drawn for the speaking order, and I'm lucky because nobody needs me to spell their names out. The first speaker will be Dale Perkins. The second speaker will be Dee Douglas. The third speaker will be Katrina Hobbs. The fourth speaker will be Shirley Lord. The fifth speaker will be Ted Gibbs. And the sixth speaker will be Ian DeMack. Now I'm going to tell you the way it's going to work because I'm going to introduce each of the speakers by name. <coughs> And at which time they will approach the stage and you will applaud rapturously, is that right? Once they're settled here, I will give you their speech title twice and then their name. At which time, what do we do? Nothing. Exactly right. Exactly right. So let me see. I've done everything I'm supposed to do. Are we ready to go? Oh, no, you're not, because I'm getting to tell a worse joke than everybody else. I forgot about that. So you can tell me if this is the worst joke of the day. Right? There were t there's two fellas, and they're camping in the woods in North America. And out of the woods comes a great big bear towards them. Well, the first tiger quickly grabs his sneakers out of his bags and starts lacing them on. And the other fella says... Why are you bothering with that? You'll never be able to outrun the bear. But he says, I don't have to outrun the bear. I just have to outrun you. <laughs> so was that the worst one? No, it wasn't the worst one? Okay. Okay, I think we're ready to go. And Mr. Chief Judge, are we all ready? Excellent. What have I forgotten? Beg your pardon? Sixty. Oh, six. 
Oh, there's one there. I don't know where that mysterious name from, came from. She's in the... Uh, she was in Table Topic. Okay. No, the the second from the bottom one. There's only six. Yes, yeah, sorry. No, they has got the original list that I had, and there's seven names on it. Sorry. Yes, you're Could you please help me welcome our first contestant, Dale Perkins. Tools for your trash. Tools for your trash, Dale Perkins. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, contest chair. Your brains are very much like trash cans. Some trash cans have their lid on all the time, and I can tell you now, there ain't no trash going into a can with its lid on. We call these closed minds. There ain't no new information going into a closed mind. And this is obviously a problem. On the other hand, some bins are absolutely overflowing. And you can't tell your wet waste from the recyclables. Now, we all know someone a little bit like this. They're usually a little bit gullible. They're a little bit too open-minded. And in fact, a famous professor once said, it is really important to keep an open mind. But not too open or your brains might fall right out. <laughs> So how do you do it? How do you have a healthy degree of scepticism while still maintaining an open-minded, optimistic approach? The answer, ladies and gentlemen, tools for your trash. Now, I'm not talking about the tools you find in your shed. These are thought tools. In fact, my grandmother came to me just the other day and she said, I've got an email, and we've all received one of them before, usually from a Nigerian prince. Uh, we've inherited a lot of money that way. And rather than telling her that this email is a scam, I thought it's more important that she thinks through it herself. She needs to learn to think critically. So I said, Grandma, how do you know that that email was written by a prince? She thought about it for a minute. It was written by a prince because it, it said so in the email. <laughs> all right, Grandma, well done. How do you know that that email can be trusted? She thought about it. Mm -hmm. I can trust the I can trust the email because it was written by a prince. <laughs> Princes don't lie, you know, they go to jail for that. Okay, so the prince, you, you know it's written by a prince because it says in the email, and the email could be trusted because it was written by a prince. But how did you prince write the email, email, prince? And she had this circular reasoning going, ladies and gentlemen, where A proves B, B proves A. So the golden rule, if you, if you take home one message today, let it be, don't listen to any of the other contestants, let it be this. <laughs> Circular reasoning is bad because it's not good. <laughs> and it's not good because it's bad, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Another popular argument that people use is what's called the argument from popularity. This is, in fact, rather than telling you, let me show you, right? Let's have a raise of hands. Who here owns a Microsoft computer? If you have a look around the room, that's quite a lot of you. Uh, who here owns a Mac computer? All right, still a fair few, but not so many. And who here doesn't know the difference, but you don't want to be left out, so go on. There, we've got a few. Oh, don't be shy, well done. So it was obvious that most of the room here owns a Microsoft computer. If I was using the argument from popularity, I could make a claim like this. 90% of people own Microsoft computers. Therefore, Microsoft computers are the best. Ladies and gentlemen, if the argument from popularity worked, the world must have been flat in the 16th century BC. 100% of the population have that view. How could so many people be wrong? <laughs> Being popular doesn't make you right. So when you hear the argument from popularity, slam the lid shut. Don't let it in your trash. If you do, you run the risk of being fooled. Now, my third tool for my trash isn't so much a thought fallacy, it's more of a quick check that every one of us can do at any time whenever you hear any claim. Ask yourself, is this testable? What does that mean, testable? I could make a claim that I am a male. You can test this. You just have to take a look at my birth certificate. <laughs> what would a non-testable claim look like? Well, that would be something like you would get out of The Last Exorcism. Who's seen that movie? 
not many of you fantastic don't run into it, it's not spectacular. <laughs> it only takes about six minutes for the main character to say this. <clears throat> We're not dealing with a ghost, oh no. We're dealing with a demon. <laughs> Ghosts don't possess people, but demons do. How would he test that? <laughs> would he, he'd have to put an ad in the paper, all right? Possessed people wanted. <laughs> and I wouldn't settle for anything less than a sample size of at least a hundred possessed people. At least, minimum. And even then, all you can do is survey them. Alright, so you're a ghost or a demon? Ghost. One from the ghost. A ghost or a demon, sir? Ghost. Looks like it's case closed. It's gonna be all ghost. Ghost or a demon, sir? Demon. I know he could be a ghost and just pretending to be a demon. <laughs> Put him down as maybe, we'll come back to that. So, Grandma, what are you doing here? <laughs> I got an email from the Prince of Darkness. <laughs> Checking for testability. It's not difficult to do, and you can do it any time you hear a claim. And if you believe something that isn't testable, and you let it in your trash, you run the risk of being fooled. Now, I'm sorry to break it to you, if you think you're really clever, but you are capable of being fooled. And in fact, pardon me, there's something in my eye, huh? What's going on here? Oh. Come on, who knew that there's no lenses in these guys of hands? Who's, who's the cleverest guy? We've got a few clever ones. Keep your hand up if you, um, if you notice that this is fake. <laughs> Oh, well done, very clever everyone. So, three things you just ought to remember. Circular reasoning. It's bad because it's not good. <laughs> Popularity. Being popular doesn't always make you right. In fact, it doesn't make you right at all. And of course, checking for testability. It's not difficult to do, but we can all do it. Those are my three tools for my trash. I encourage you all now, in fact, this is your homework, find a fourth tool. Come up with it yourself. They're not difficult. You just have to do a bit of research or a bit of thinking. And if you're really having a hard time, don't worry. I'm going to be here all for the rest of the day. Come to me. I'll give you my email address. And if you just send me your name, your BSB and your account number, <laughs> we can sort something out. Contest you. <laughs>